Hello my fellow weirdlings, it's Margo, and today I'm telling you about the end of the mortal life of one of the biggest and most beloved horror legends of all time, Bella Lugosi. If you're ready to hear about the death of Dracula, keep watching. Born Bela Ferenc de Blasco on October 20th, 1882, Bela Lugosi was a Hungarian-American actor who'd had an extensive career in Hungary under the name of Erstedt Olt before immigrating to the U.S. in 1920. But he's best known for his iconic role as 1931's Dracula, based on the timeless Bram Stoker vampire novel. Unfortunately, he found himself typecast after this role, which limited his ability to make a living in Hollywood. His name is synonymous with Count Dracula, which proved to be both an admirable accomplishment and a personal burden. Lugosi's final years were somewhat bleak and were affected greatly by an addiction to painkillers prescribed for sciatica, said to be caused by an injury he sustained while serving in the Austro-Hungarian army during World War I. Lugosi was perhaps the first Hollywood star to openly admit to having a drug addiction. As his addiction grew, producers refused to hire him. When offered a chance to resurrect his career by the infamously odd filmmaker Ed Wood, a grateful Lugosi checked himself into a rehab clinic and spent three months getting his addiction under control. When he left the hospital in 1955, he gave what's thought to be his last filmed interview, talking about his drug treatment, his plans for the new Ed Wood film, and how he felt like a million dollars. Sadly, a year later, Bela Lugosi died in his sleep on August 16, 1956, of a coronary occlusion with myocardial fibrosis at the age of 73. He was discovered in bed by his fifth wife, Hope, upon her return from work. Hope told the press he was terrified of death. Toward the end, he was very weary, but he was still afraid of death. Three nights before he died, he was sitting on the edge of the bed. I asked him if he was still afraid to die. He told me that he was. I did my best to comfort him, but you might as well save your breath with people like that. They're still going to be afraid of death. Although Lugosi felt that he had been forgotten in his later years, his death was deemed newsworthy enough for a photographer to rush to his apartment to snap a photograph of his body being wheeled away by the undertakers. Prior to his funeral service, Lugosi's body lay in state in full Dracula garb. Although Hope told the press that it was his last wish to be buried in his famous costume, it was actually the decision of Bella's ex-wife Lillian and their son Bella Jr. It's said that hundreds of fans lined Hollywood Boulevard to see their beloved horror icon. Legend has it that fellow horror legends Peter Lorre and Boris Karloff were viewing the body of their old friend who'd risen from so many coffins as Count Dracula, and one of them said, Come now, Bella, quit putting us on. Though I can't find evidence that either of them were actually there. A more believable story came from comedic actor Joey Bishop, who said he was playing cards with friends when someone came in with the news Bella Lugosi died. Without breaking stride, Bishop said he'll be back and went on with the game. In another bit of lore about some final spooky Lugosi mischief, it's said that Lugosi, a very avid cigar smoker, had a horse-drawn funeral procession that started at his home in Hollywood and ended at his burial plot at Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City, Los Angeles. When the driver tried turning the horses to the right to go to the cemetery, they violently veered to the left, charging through a busy intersection to get onto Hollywood Boulevard. Terrified, the driver did what he could to make the horses stop, but they wouldn't until they reached the cigar shop that Bella had walked to every day for his morning paper and cigars. But it seems unlikely they would have taken a horse-drawn carriage for that great distance. In another version, I've heard this happened when the driver lost control of the hearse, passing by the cigar shop while transporting Lugosi's body from his apartment to the mortuary. The most believable version of the story is that the driver of the hearse made an illegal turn during the funeral procession and followed a route often taken by Lugosi in life. The driver didn't have any excuse or explanation for making the turn, but thought it was weird. The funeral service was relatively small, and big Hollywood names were conspicuously absent, though Ed Wood did serve as a pallbearer. Contrary to popular myth, Lillian Lugosi, not Frank Sinatra, paid for the funeral and the plot in Holy Cross Cemetery. Hope paid for the coffin. It's rumored that over the years, people have tried to dig up Lugosi's body to steal his famous Dracula cape, and that others have sold packets of dirt from his grave. I don't know if either of these scenarios actually happen, but Lugosi legend and lore certainly lives on. Bella Lugosi left behind an enduring and unique legacy, and huge shoes to fill for all future Draculas. The man who felt forgotten in his final days is still remembered and adored by many generations of horror fans to this day. That's all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed hearing this story and will come back for more. 
like, subscribe, leave a comment, and bring your friends, family, COVID pod, cult members, invisible friends, or enemies. And if you've heard any interesting Lugosi lore, feel free to share it in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching.